um, <clears throat> you can build melodies and harmonies. So it is an organized series of pitches or tones that could be ascending or descending. Or it is also consists of a series of notes that differ in sound. So in your example here, um, your ascending uh, scale is from C. Okay, that's the middle C. If you can see in, or the, uh, below the staff, you have there the small line with a quarter note. So that is your middle C. So your scale, your ascending scale uh, is C, then followed by D, then uh, E, that's on the first line, okay, below, and then uh, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so from middle C to upper C, that is a scale. Okay, that is an ascending scale. For your descending scale, you have from upper C going to the lower C or the middle C. Or um, you can also use that, uh, the, the sofa syllables of that. So, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay, amun ang iya nga, sofa syllables. O pagbalik, padalom, for descending, you have do, re, mi, uh, uh, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, ri, do. Okay, that is an example of a scale. So, let's continue. We have different types of scale. Okay, but we will learn only two. A major scale and a minor scale. So a major scale has eight tones. So in your example there, you have the C major scale. So that is... Uh, the tones are the, the the notes there are C D E F G A B C or the pitch names. So the relationship of a note from another is what we call the interval. So you can see in your screen the whole tone, whole tone. So from from C to D. Okay, so that is um, an interval. So we will discuss that later on. Okay. So interval is the inclusive distance between one tone and another, whether sounded successively, or that will be melodic interval, or simultaneously, that is harmonic interval. So the distance or the interval from the note C to D is a whole tone, if you try to look at your screen. Okay? So from C, that's the first whole note, pakad to sa ikadua, that is uh, whole tone ang ilang interval. So from C to D, whole tone. From D to E, that's another whole tone. From F to G, that's another. While um, G to A and A to B is a whole tone. Uh, yes, semitone. And um, A to B is a whole tone. And the note from E to F and B to C is a semitone. Okay, so we'll discuss that later on. Now, <clears throat> so as I have said, interval is the inclusive distance. Okay, here, this is, um, you can see it here on a piano keyboard. Okay, so we will uh, present to you the piano keyboard. This is how a semitone and a whole tone differs. So on a piano keyboard, semitones are from key to key with no keys in between. Okay. So that's semitone. So you try to look at your, your screen. So ang semitone dira ang ngalan. Okay. Uh, it starts with uh, the white key, then the black key. Okay. So that is only a half step higher. So that's why tinawag siyang semitone. But the whole tone, okay, the whole tone has one whole step. Okay, whole tones, always skip a key with one key in between. So uh, if you try to look at your example there, on the first whole tone, so the whole tone is from one white key to another white key, but there is a black key in between, okay, at the center. So that is what you call whole tone. Kay ang from one uh, White key to black key is just a half tone or semitone. But 
uh, if you will proceed to white key, so it's another semitone. Okay, so that's why it is a whole tone. So whole tone there is from white key to white key. You have also another whole tone there from black key to black key. Oh, bakit whole tone siya? Because uh, from black key, may ara siya nga white key sa dalom. Then, kadto ka naman sa uh, black key. So, but silingon may ara siya, ano, white key sa center sa dua ka black. So, that's why two whole, uh, two black keys could be considered a whole tone also. Okay? So, uh, I hope it is clear, my dear pathfinders. <clears throat> now, the major scale is made up of a pattern of two whole tones followed by a semitone, followed by three whole tones, ending with one more semitone. So, amuning pattern. This is the pattern of a major scale. So, uh, two whole tones, so whole, whole tone, whole tone, then semitone, followed by three whole tones. So, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, then semitone. So, tandaan, tanda, ha? Uh, that is the pattern for the major scale. Okay. So, uh, this is, uh, this uh, scale is in the major, is in the C major. Okay. It starts with C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay. If you can remember it, Kagina. Then, uh, so notice how the whole, uh, whole tones skip a key on the keyboard and semitones do not. Also, you can see that two semitones makes up a whole tone. So, amo na siya kaginang aton niya again. Discuss. From white key to another white key is a whole tone. While from white key to another black key is a semitone. And you can also have two from black key to another black key is another whole tone. Okay. Whole tones and semitones are types of interval. So please uh, remember this, my dear Pathfinders. Next, another scale. So we are done with the major scale. Another scale is a natural minor scale. Okay? So ang iya naman yung pattern is whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone. Okay, that is the pattern. So an example here is the A minor. Okay, A minor na siya dere. So, one whole tone, one half tone, or semi, ang, ang half tone dari is semitone na siya, kagina dito sa major scale. So, one whole tone, half tone, two whole tones, half tone, two whole tones. Kaya muna yung pattern sa natural minor scales. So, other scales are melodic minor, harmonic minor, and pentatonic scale. Okay, these are uh, other examples. Now, for your number two requirement, you have to write a scale in both treble and bass clef. But before that, um, let's learn what is a clef. So a clef is used to describe the symbol at the beginning of the set of five lines or the staff on which notes are printed. Okay? Um, we have here two clef signs. So example na ton, place on the staff. Actually, there are many clef signs. So um, on, the up, on the upper staff, staff, we have there the treble clef or the G clef. Why tinawag siyang G clef? Because ang iya nga, when you draw that, ang iya nga starting point is the G or on the second line. Okay, that's why tinawag siyang G. Then, yung mukha niya ay parang G din. Okay? Uh, tingnan nyo on the, on the upper uh, staff. Then, the bass clef. So, uh, or it is called F clef also. Why it's called F clef? Because, because it started, when you draw it, it started from the uh, F uh, line. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's continue. So this symbol tells the player what the notes are going to be with um, within the staff. In piano music, piece, both treble and bass clefs are used. 
Usually, the pianist play the notes on the bass clef using his or her left hand. Uh, sa mga pianist naton. So, kung bass clef gani, uh, left hand ang nag -play. And on the notes placed on the treble clef, uh, the player plays her right hand. Okay, by her right hand. So, um, that is the treble clef and the bass clef. Now, let us see how the notes are placed on the staff. Remember that the notes are placed on the staff through lines and spaces. So, di ba kanina? So, which its line and space indicate a different pitch names? Now, in the case of the treble clef, line notes are from the first line. We have, okay, what's the uh, pitch name? So, remember children that this, uh, this uh, is a treble clef or uh, G clef sign. Ang sa permiro gate, ang sa unang symbol. Okay, so ang iya nga lines name sang treble clef or G clef are first line is E, pitch name ang tawag siya. So E, second line is G, third line is B, fourth line is D, fifth line is F. So pwede natin siyang magawa ng acronym. So we can have every good boy does fine. So every good boy. That's fine. That's for the line notes of the treble clef. Okay, next. Let's proceed to the uh, line notes of the bass clef. So, sa bass clef, yeah, first is G. Okay? Uh, G, second line is B, third line is D, fourth line is F, fifth line is A. We can also have an acronym, Good Boy Thus, fine always. So, para hapus. Okay, it's easier for you to remember. Again, for the for the treble clef lines, you have every good boy does fine. So E G B D F. For the uh, bass clef, you have good boy does fine always or G B D F A. Okay. Next, let's proceed to the space notes. Okay, what are the pitch names on the Space of the treble clef or the G clef. So first space is A F. Second A. Third space is C. Fourth space is E. So you can have an acronym face. Okay, ang inyong mukha. Okay, that's on the pitch names of the treble clef spaces. Then for the space names. Okay, pitch names of the um, F clef or uh, bass clef, mayroon tayong word na asig. So, A-C-E-G. Okay, so I hope nakuha natin, uh, my dear Pathfinders. <coughs> now, uh, Okay, another here is uh, notes names can be seen on a piano keyboard as well. The notes played with the black keys on a piano keyboard are named with a note letter plus a symbol. So, sa black, ha? Uh, black keys. To indicate if the note is above or below the note named by a semitone. These two sem symbols are what we call accidental signs. Okay, accidental signs ang tawag sa ila. Now, we have here an example of accidental signs. The first one is the sharp. Okay, sharp means higher in pitch by one semitone or half step. Okay, half step lang ang gintaas niya. Then, uh, so we, here, uh, we have here an example uh, from C, pagtaas kadto ka sa black key, Okay, that will become C sharp. Okay, but siling on nagtaas kasang half step. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, wala sang sharp, F, F sharp. Okay, then so on and so forth. Okay, next. Number two, flat. Ang flat ng accidental sign is, or it means lower in pitch by one semi tone. So nagbalis ka, it is the... Opposite of a sharp. Kung sharp yan nagpataas half step, ang flat yan nagpanubo siya half step. Okay. So, in your example there, uh, from 
from um, from D, o oh, di ba may C tapos may D. From D, pag nagpanubo ka, magiging D flat. Okay. From E, magiging E flat siya. From G, magiging G flat siya. So nagpababa ikaw ng half step. So there are also, if you try to note, notice, my dear children uh, or pathfinders, uh, there are the black keys. So, di ba? Sa babaw kanina, may ara siyang uh, C sharp. Pero sa dalom, nagiging D flat siya. Okay, but the same ang black key na siya. So, there are times that um, the black key has two names. So, C sharp or D flat. So, ito ay tinatawag na inharmonic. Okay, inharmonic. Why? Uh, because two notes with different pitch names but with the same pitch or tone. Okay? So, amuna nga gintawag siya nga inharmonic. Kaya kung i-play mo siya sa piano, it has the same tone or pitch. Okay, next. Sharps and flats. <clears throat> so, sharps and flats are notated or drawn on the staff. By placing the sharp or flat symbol in front, uh, of the note on the staff. So, francia. Francia sang uh, note. Ginabutang ang flat or sharp. So, this example shows the notes. B flat, G flat, F sharp, uh, D flat, E flat. So, the note that the scale starts on uh, is called the root note. Okay, titingnan natin. So, ito yung tinatawag na root note. C. This is, uh, actually, this is a major scale, di ba? So, kung, kung di in siya nag-start nga pitch or nga note, so, amun ang ginatawag nga scale root or the root note. So, in the case of C major, it started with middle C. So, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Ah, okay, so it started with G, uh, with C. On the G major scale, it started also with G. Huh? So, ang G ara sa second line. So, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Na, pasunod lang na siya. Uh, tapos, may ara na siya dira sa sharp. Okay. So, the root note of G major scale is G. Or pitch name, G. Okay, next. Number three. You have, will have to know a half tone or a whole tone, a third, a fifth, and an octave. So, remember our intervals, as we have discussed a while ago. The relationship of note from another is what we call interval. Now, we got some note example is C to C. So, kung C to C siya, uh, there's a unison. So, tawag na sa iya unison. Then, from C to D, that is second interval. So, C, D. O, second interval na siya. Next, from C to E. So, C, C, D, E. Okay, that's fourth, a uh, third interval. Then from C to F, so C, D, E, F. So fourth interval na siya. Padayunon mo pagid, C to G, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, that's fifth interval. So yan yung tinatawag na uh, fifth interval. Then uh, from C, pakadto na siya sa C, nga up from lower C to upper C, higher C, so that is an octave. Kay eight, ano na na siya? Eight interval. Okay? So muna ang ginatawag na interval, my dear pathfinders. So I hope nakuha na to. Then let's proceed to number four. Okay, you have to distinguish a march from a waltz and give the time of its or the time signature. So as we know, marches are usually two for time. One, two, one, two. If you can remember your marching uh, uh, tempo, so left, right, left, right, left. So, nag march ka mo. So, those are marches. Okay. Uh, two, four time or sometimes four, four. Okay. So, the same as two bars and measure, although other time signatures are possible. While on the waltz, sa waltz ya, ang another name niya is vals from the German term, it is a piece of music in triple meter. So, most often, it is a 3-4 time signature, but sometimes 3-8 or 6-4. So, ang iya sinayang nga counting is ano? 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3. Okay, so it is a slow tempo. 
Ang sa March ya, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ang sa waltz ya, excuse me. Ang sa waltz ya, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So waltzes typically have one chord per measure with the root of the chord as the first note. Okay. So for example, sa mga music, in the marching, you have the onward Christian soldiers. Then for the waltz also, so actually in your in your church hymnal, makakita kita dala sa ng third three fourth time signature. Okay, so muna ng waltz. Okay, next let's proceed to number five requirement. What is a quarter note, a half note, a whole note? Draw the symbols of it. So I know, my dear pathfinders, you already are familiar with this because this is a lesson, I think, from the grade two, grade two, pakamu as tanan ng higher grades. So we have here the note values. So the whole note, amo nang yung symbol bilog. Okay, play for four bits. Okay, may aras yung four bits. A whole note akoli has also the equivalent of rest. Kung sa piano yah, ang whole note ginaplay siya four bits. So one, two, three, four. While sa rest ya, wala na siya ginaplay. So, stop na siya. Nag-arrest ikaw. But you are counting four bits. Okay. So, that's the difference between a note and a rest. A half note. So, kung ninyo dira makita, daw di siya nga wala sang unod sa tunga. Okay. It is hollow. Then, it has two bits. While the half rest is, uh, it has two bits also. Quarter note. So, di siya nga may unod. Okay? Play for one beat. Uh, while the quarter rest also is be, uh, wala siya gina-play. But you are counting one beat. Eight note, play for one half a beat. Then eighth rest, uh, you are not playing but you are counting one half. Then sixteenth note, play for one fourth of a beat. Sixteenth rest, rest for one fourth of a beat. Okay? So, I hope maintindihan kag matandaan natin my dear pathfinders ang ilang symbols okay whole note half note quarter note eighth note and sixteenth note because you have to draw that okay as part of your test with your master guide okay number six name five great composers and one composition of each including an oratorio a piano composition and a song so we have here Johann Sebastian Bach That's from 1685 to 1750. He is considered one of the greatest religious composers in history. He believed that music must serve the glory of God. One of his most famous works in a prelude piece based on the well-known hymn tune is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Okay? So, ang iyang aim is the aim and final reason of all music should be nothing else but the glory of God and the refreshment of the Spirit. Now, let's try to hear sang iyang example. Proceed. George Frederick Handel. So from 1685 to 1759. So Handel composed a type of music called oratorio. Okay, oratorio started out as a sacred opera, but changed by dropping the acting parts, the stage scenery and backgrounds, and the costumes. Oratorios became a large piece of music that told a biblical story. Often, these were grand works using an orchestra, large choir, organ, and soloist singers. Ang kay Handel nga most famous oratorio is called the Messiah, okay, from which almost everyone can remember the Hallelujah Chorus. 
So Handel had finished that chorus. He tearfully told the servant, I did think I did see all heaven before me and the great God himself. So uh, uh, we can hear this, um, Messiah or Hallelujah, chorus from Handel. Okay, next, Ludwig van Beethoven from 1770 to 1827. So Beethoven was born in Bonn, Germany. His two best known compositions are his Fifth and Ninth Symphony. So please take note of this. The entire Fifth Symphony is united as a musical idea by the four notes here at the beginning of the piece. His Ninth Symphony is known for its ending piece, which includes a choir singing Ode to Joy. But uh, please take note, my dear children. Um, his father and grandfather were both singers at the court of the Prince Cologne. By the age 11 and a half, he was the assistant organist at the court chapel, and by 12, he had published some music. But later on, because of uh, probably maltreatment of his father, he realized that he was losing his hearing. So, nadulaan siya sang, sang hearing, my dear Pathfinders. At the age of 32, he had decided to retire. But after a while, the will to create music was so strong that Beethoven continued to compose without hearing. So how would you imagine sang iyang skill, no? He is composing music just in his mind without hearing what he is composing. Okay? Amuna ka, ka sagad, my dear Pathfinders, si Ludwig van Beethoven. Okay, next. Uh, Frederick Francois Chopin. Okay, Frederick Francois Chopin. He was taught music in Warsaw, Poland. And he is considered the national composer of Poland even though he was only half Polish. His father was French but had immigrated to Poland and married Frederick's mother. Chopin is best known as a composer of music for the piano. He is in fact called the poet of the piano. A piano in a home in Chopin's time was the entertainment center for the family. Chopin uh, wrote a number of piano pieces called nocturnes, meaning night music. He wrote his most well nocturne in C minor in 1841. So uh, you please listen to his, um, to his example. <laughs> Okay, next, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Okay, from January 1756 to December 5, 1791. He was born in Salzburg in the Holy Roman Empire. Mozart, my dear Pathfinders, is a child prodigy, meaning he is the most amazing genius in musical history. Why? At the age, uh, he is considered also the greatest classical Composer, one or among the greatest classical composers of all time. At the age of five, my dear children, he was already playing the violin and the harpsichord. How would you imagine that? Okay? At age six, he was recognized as an exceptional pianist. And at seven, he was already composing excellent music. Amuna kasagad kagadinios si Wolfgang Mozart, my dear Pathfinders. And at the age of 13, he had written sonatas, concertos, symphonies, religious works, operas, and operettas. Okay, so uh, let us hear sang iyang 
example of his work. Okay, you can also um, um, search Hayden Joseph and Tchaikovsky, Peter Illich. Okay, these are also great composers of music. Okay, so our number seven uh, requirement is you have to play with or without music or sing from memory 15 hymns. Oh, hapos na sa inyo, kaya nyo na. Ano man, mga ano mo lang ni siya, these are only... Uh, choruses or um, scripture songs. So, 15 scripture songs or choruses and or other sacred songs and list the composer of it. So, if possible, huh, you have to list the composer. Then, for number 8 requirement, my dear Pathfinders, you have to play or sing from memory one piece of good music other than those used in number 7. So, you have to uh, render a special song. Okay, parang ah, Maka, ma, maubra mo ini nga requirement. The number nine, you have to do one of the following. So, if you are an in instrumentalist, you have to sight read and play a moderately difficult piece of music. Then you have to explain all signs and terms in it. For letter B, if you are a singer, you have to conduct pattern while singing. So, you have to beat. Okay? You have to lead your group in singing 3-4 and 4-4 four, four time signature music. Okay, so hapos na na. Uh, you can uh, do that in your school, in your classroom, or even in your church. Okay, then, uh, this is how you conduct the pattern for 3-4 time signature. So, mabit kita subong. So, the 3-4 time signature is being done like this. So, one, two, three. 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 Okay? Then, for the four, four time, you have to conduct pat. This is the conducting pattern. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, if you have a song in three, four time signature, you can conduct it. Uh, using the 3-4 time conducting pattern and the 4-4 time kung may araman ka mo song, 4-4 ah, time signature. Okay, then, uh, your number 10 uh, requirement is you have to define orchestra and name at least 5 instruments in our orchestra. So, uh, the meaning or the word of, of the word orchestra tends to refer to the ensemble of mixed instrumentali instrumentalists playing classical music. So, uh, maghambal kita gani orchestra, my dear uh, uh, children or pathfinders. This is a group of uh, no, mixed instrumental, instrumentalists. So, you have different instrument, uh, instruments there. Percussions, trumpets, trombones, tuba, friends horns, clarinet, bassoons, second violin, piccolos, flutes, first violins, cellos, violas, and basses. Okay, they are grouped together to create one music. Okay, so instruments used in the modern orchestra. We have uh, four groups, brass instruments, horn, trumpet, trombone, bass, trombone, tuba. For the woodwind, we have flute, piccolo, oboe, core anglais, anglais, clarinet, bass clarinet, bassoon, contrabassoon. Sa strings, yeah, you have harp, violin, viola, cello, double bass, piano. And for the percussion, you have timpani, snare drum, bass drum, and celesta. So, muning mga ginapang gamit niya instruments. Number 11. This will be your last requirement. We have to do a biographical sketch on a famous hymn writer and orally present it to a group. So, I have given you here an example, Frances Jane Van Alstein or more commonly known as Fanny Crosby. So, makita ni siya naton sa church hymnal. So, she was an American mission worker, poet, lyricist, and composer. She was a prolific hymnist, writing more than 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. 
with more than 1,000 million copies printed. She is also known for her teaching and her rescue mission work. But mind you, my dear Pathfinders, si Fanny Crosby was blind. Sang gamay siya when, when she was, I think, uh, six months old. So, napabayaan siya sang iyang parents. So, she became blind. But, despite of this, she was able to make 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. How would you imagine that, my dear Pathfinders? So, uh, <clears throat> she was known as the queen of gospel song writers and as the mother of modern congregational singing in America with most American hymnals containing her work. Crosby's best-known songs include Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Tenderly Calling You Home, Praise Him, Praise Him, Rescue the Perishing, and To God Be the Glory. So, there is no impossible with God, my dear Pathfinders. So, we are done with our lecture. And at this point... I want you to have this uh, short quiz. So um, if you have your paper and pencil there, you can get it and answer this quiz for this honor. But of course, you have to make the requirements. You have to accomplish all the requirements being mentioned just a while ago. For the, okay, quiz time, number one. Okay, they are an important building block of music. They are the basis of melodies and chords. Letter A, melody. B, interval, C, scales. Okay, you can only choose your answer there, the letter of your answer. Okay, number two. It is used to describe the symbol at the beginning of the staff on which notes are printed. This symbol tells the player what the notes are going to be within the staff. So, ang symbol kanina, natin discuss natin. So, letter A, scales. Letter B, clef. C, interval. Again, it is used to describe the symbol at the beginning of the stuff on which notes are printed. This symbol tells the player what the notes are going to be within the stuff. Number three, in what clef symbol can this ascending scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C line names be found? In, one, in what clef symbol? Letter A, treble tri or G clef, B, bass clef or F clef, C, alto clef. Okay, next. Number four, number Okay, number four. It is a piece of music in triple meter, most often three four time, sometimes three eight or six four. It has a one, two, three, one, two, three count and generally a slow tempo. Is it waltz, B march, or tango? Okay, next. I'm sorry, sa so numbering na kon. Then number four. Okay, what kind of note has the symbol? So this will be number five. Okay, it has four bits. Okay, letter A, half note, B, whole note, C, quarter note. Okay, next. A composer who was considered one of the greatest religious composers in history, he believed that music must serve the glory of God. Okay, who is that? Johann Sebastian Bach, A, B, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, letter C, George Frederick Handel. Okay, number six. He was considered a child prodigy and the most amazing genius in musical history. At the age of five, he was able to ano ganito? play violin and harpsichord. Letter A, Johann Sebastian Bach. B, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Or letter C, George Frederick Handel. The number seven, it refers to the ensemble, uh, ensemble of mixed instrumentalists playing classical music. So, again, it refers to the symbol of mixed instrumentalists playing classical music. Letter A, march. B, choir. C, orchestra. And number eight, this will be your last number. Which among these instruments is an example of a percussion instrument? A, violin. B, trombone. C, snare drum. Again, which among these instruments is an example of a percussion instrument? A, violin. B, trombone. And C, snare drum. Okay. So if you are done, let's check your work, my dear Pathfinders. Are you ready? Okay, for letter for number one. They are important building block of music. Okay, that is scales. Number two. It is used to describe symbol at the beginning of the staff. Its notes are pre printed. Okay, clef. 
Then, number three, in what clef can this ascending scale, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, lines, names be found on the staff? Treble or G clef. Number four, it is a piece of music uh, in triple meter. Okay, so that is waltz. Kay ang four, four to ya is march, di ba? The number four, what kind of note has this symbol? It has four bits. Okay, that is a whole note. The number five, a composer was considered one of the greatest religious composers in history. Johann Sebastian Bach. Then, number six, he was considered a child prodigy and the most amazing genius in musical history. So, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Number seven, it refers to the symbol of mixed instrumentalist playing classical music, orchestra. And the last number, which among these instruments is an example of percussion instrument, that is snare drum. Okay, so my dear Pathfinders, I hope this afternoon you were able to know your requirements in your music honor. And I hope and pray that God will give you wisdom as you start to do the requirements. And of course, I am praying that you, all of you, will achieve this honor in music. And most of all, my dear Pathfinders, don't forget, if you have the talent in music, use it for the glory of God. So thank you so much for listening. God bless everyone. to preach, we are to teach, we are to